right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, congrats on making it through another week. I know the fall can feel like really busy time, so we're doing it. Oh, I think I have that over the back. Sorry, guys. Um, we are really excited you're all here and um, really excited for today's session, um, How to Network Online to Boost Your Personal Brand with career and leadership coach, Brittany and Cole. Hi, Brittany. Um, just a few quick items before we get started. Um, for those of you who are new to the Mom Project, we are a digital talent marketplace and community where you can realize your full, full professional potential. Uh, through our marketplace, we connect you with job opportunities at family-friendly companies that allow you to thrive at work and at home. And through our community, we provide you with the support, tools, and resources like today's event that you need to keep moving forward in your career journey. Um, and that brings us to today's session. Um, we were all thrust into a virtual first world about 18 months ago, um, leaving us with a lot to learn when it comes to building relationships and networking in this whole new environment. Um, we are so excited to have Brittany here to share some expert advice and tips on how to approach building relationships and our networks in meaningful ways in this digital world, which we know is essential for job searching and for forging our career paths. Um, we're going to go through a bit of content in the beginning, and then we'll leave lots of time at the end to take questions from you all. So please, if you have questions at any point, drop them in the chat. We'll get to them um, as we can throughout the conversation. And then if anybody can't stay around for the whole time, do not worry. If you are RSVP'd for the event, we will be sending a follow-up email um, either today or Monday with a recording of the session and some information from Brittany and how you can get in touch with her if you want to continue the conversation. Um, so yes, without further ado, I'm so excited to welcome Brittany. Thank you so much, Brittany, for being here. We're really excited for this session. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really thrilled to be joining the Mom Project this afternoon, and I'm excited to get into this conversation. And so uh, if you're joining in, I'm always curious about where people are located. So feel free to drop your location into the chat, uh, make some good connections. Our topic today is how to network online to build your personal brand. And so moments like this are a really great opportunity for you to do that in the chat. That's really where we cultivate community online. So make sure that you take advantage of that. And as we're going through today, if you see someone and you see, okay, we're kind of thinking the same way, or maybe someone drops what they do in the chat and you're like, okay, we're kind of in the same industry, definitely take the initiative to reach out to make that connection. And we'll talk a little bit more about ways that that can look as we go along today. So this is a masterclass. And that makes me so excited that the Mom Project uh, uses that terminology because I am a teacher by nature. So you see my whiteboard in the back. So we're going to do some slides and click through, but I'm not here to present to you today. And I hope that's okay with you. I want to have a conversation with you and really walk you through some practical tools that you can use. I'm all about uh, what can you use in your everyday to really make your, your work, your career uh, that much more impactful and better for you. So I'm going to share, I'll, I will get started just with a few slides here. So I'm going to share my screen so that you can access first a guide that I will be walking us through today. So again, uh, I'm thrilled to be here. And this is such an important topic, such a timely topic as according to McKinsey and Co and Lean In for the last seven years, they've done their Women in the Workplace study. And if you work in a corporate environment or you've come from working in a corporate environment, that data tells us that three and four women currently today are considering either downsizing their career or leaving or have already left their career altogether. So if you are in the midst of a transition career-wise, you are in the right place. So you see a QR code um, on the screen right now. You can uh, pull up your cell phone and access that. If you're on your cell phone, there's a short bit.ly link down at the bottom. And that's going to give you direct access to a guide that I'm going to be walking us through so that you, this is a masterclass. So this is, this is us working together today so that you have a place to record your ideas, your thoughts, and also so you have something beyond this hour that we're together that you can implement, okay? So let's get into the conversation. I look forward to staying connected with you. LinkedIn is one of my favorite spaces online to connect, to learn, and to grow. Um, so this QR code that you're seeing here is for my LinkedIn profile. And in fact, um, if you connect with me on there, I'm actually doing a talk with LinkedIn in two weeks. We're gonna be talking about how to leverage LinkedIn as a platform 
for building out your personal brand um, as a business owner. But I think it's great for professional leaders as well, career changers to really get a better idea of ways that you can use LinkedIn specifically. So make sure you connect with me on there, drop any tips and takeaways that you have. I look forward to staying connected with you. So um, if you haven't already downloaded that guide, make sure you grab it. We're going to walk through it today. It's a PDF. It's about nine pages and it's going to give you some great takeaways for us to discuss. So when I thought about this topic of how do we network online to really build our personal brand, the first thing that came to mind was you. So I'm here today for you. So I hope you're already in the chat. As you have questions, feel free to drop those in because I want to make sure that your questions get answered today. And if they don't get answered today, my commitment to you is to work with the mom project team to make sure they get answered. And we have all kinds of fun ways that we do that in the work that I get to do. So whether I'm sending you a quick video after or we're emailing back and forth, I want to make sure that you have the tool that you can use. So why are you here? I would imagine a few of these may fit. So I would just want to make sure we have the right, right group in the room today. So perhaps you're pivoting from a one career to a more fulfilling one, or maybe you just want to get a little bit more confident in sharing your story. And you're like, hey, I used to be able to do this by just walking down the hallway and talking to somebody. Now everybody is online. How do I communicate who I am and the value that I bring in the work that I do if you are an introvert, hello, I think of myself as the captain of the introverts, believe it or not. And so if you've ever had the thought of like, oh my gosh, this online space is not for me. I don't want to post everything about what I'm eating, what I'm doing on the weekend and what I'm working on every single day. Listen, you are in the right place. If you're looking to just get more confident about what do I say if I'm trying to network? listen, you're in the right place. And this last bullet point is probably one of my favorites. I'm not a big fan of the word networking, but I am a marketer inherently. And so I know to use the language that is the language of the land. And so we use that word. But if you want to be able to network without feeling like you're networking, you following me? Like you don't want to have that feeling of like, oh, here I am, I'm networking, right? If you want to be able to have a more authentic um, experience in your connections with other people, you are in the right place. And so I recognize that there is um, a lot of anxiety, right? A lot of um, concern as it relates to the professional development and advancement of women in this particular place and time. And not only do I see that um, in terms of coaching clients that I get to work with, so women like you, men if you're on, men like you as well, but I also see this on the organization side as well in the work that I get to do from a DEI perspective of like, okay, we're looking around and our turnover of women is really, really high right now, right? The great resignation is happening. And so I want you to know that you're in the right place. There's a lot that's happening. So let's just take a deep breath in and exhale. And whatever thoughts or feelings that we have about, oh my gosh, I'm not getting this networking thing right you're in the right place. We're gonna make some progress today in the direction. So let's affirm this. I love affirmations. Um, I have a, my own personalized deck of affirmations that I've created that you can get access to, but they're one of the ways that I have recalibrate my thinking. And so much of this starts and ends with mindset. So here's our affirmation for today. I'm equipped to thrive through my current challenges. Everything I need is within me. Obstacles are an opportunity to reimagine and recreate in unprecedented ways. I'm aware of my thoughts and I'll maintain my peace of mind in challenging situations today. I was built for this. I control what I choose to focus on and I will replace any negative thoughts with thoughts that are true, pure, lovely, and good. I am a thriver. So if you have a thought of like, you know what? I'm not a networker and that's why I'm on. Let's replace that thought because today I'm learning how to network online and it's going to help me to boost my personal brand. So again, my name is Brittany Cole. I'm thrilled to be joining you. I'm standing in my home office in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm a native of, but my career actually took me to all sorts of places. And I spent about six years away from Nashville and for much of that time, uh, I was away in New York. So I got to spend some really great time there. I spent about 12 years at Pfizer in uh, commercial leadership roles from sales to marketing to getting to do diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And it's through that work and through my passion, really purpose of helping to encourage and equip leaders to thrive that 
I founded Career Thrivers. And so Career Thrivers is a leadership development firm, and we work directly with organizations, helping them to cultivate a space where everyone can thrive. Here's what I know to be true. And I still get to coach and I love coaching, but I believe that there are two things that that are needed if we're going to thrive in our career. You've got to be in a space where you believe that you belong, right? That's the DEI work that we get to do. But you also have to own your personal brand. And that's what I want to help you with today through being more strategic in how you network. All right. So let's get into the conversation today. And really, this is the last slide because we're heading over to the whiteboard. All right. Here's the bottom line when it comes to how we're building strategic relationships. And this is really what I think about when I think about networking. Really what we're doing is we're looking to connect, right? The point of communication, John C. Maxwell has a great book. It says, uh, everyone communicates, few connect. Everyone communicates, few connect. And the premise there is that the point of communication, the reason why we have all of these different mediums to be able to communicate from beyond the office to across the globe is really for the purpose of making a connection. And so if we're going to get better at that, right, as a group today, if we're going to really learn how to network in a way that is genuine and authentic, I believe that there are two things that we really have to do. We One, have to really own and build our emotional intelligence. And we're going to talk about that and really unpack that with these powerful questions today across three main areas. And then we've got to create a plan for what this looks like so that we can better manage our relationships. If you are in any career, any industry, regardless of what you do, there are two kinds of capital that you need in order to advance. You need performance capital, right? That's in the results that you're driving in the work that you're doing, right? That's the stuff that's typically on your mid-year review or your end of the year review. And then, right, you have that performance capital. You also need the relationship capital. And I would tell you, there is this, you may or may not be familiar with PIE, P-I-E, but it's research from a management consultant that talks about the keys to advancing in your career. Performance, image and exposure. That's what PI stands for, performance, image, and exposure. And I'll go ahead and give you the stats. Only 10% of career advancement is performance, right? So if I were to ask you which of those three is most important, usually we over-index, especially as women, on performance. And I see it every day in the coaching that I get to do. I see women who work really hard. They're the first to come in. They're the last to leave. And many times they're planning the team building activity. So you're doing all of the things, right? You're working really hard, but you're wondering why is it when the time comes for merit increases, when the time comes for the stretch assignments, which would lead to more exposure, my name doesn't come up. Right? I'm not the one that's getting the tap on the shoulder saying, hey, this is coming up and I want you to know before it hits. Right? That's because we've got to lift our head up. We've got to do a better job at networking and we have to have that image and exposure, which is 90% of advancement. So here's the first question that we have to ask ourselves. And I apologize, there's one more slide. Right? It's the why. And I want to just give you a framework for this. Right? So before we even get into the mechanics of networking online, like the what and the how and the when and what do I say? First question we've got to answer is what is what is your purpose? What is your purpose? And I would encourage you to write it out in this format. I am building relationships with blank. Go ahead and leave that one blank because we're going to get to the who in just a second. I'm building relationships with blank to what? I want you to write that down on something that you have next to you. Type it out if you're in the notes in your phone. And I want you to fill in that second blank to what? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Is it to grow your business? Is it to pivot your career? Is it to land a role in an industry that you've never worked in before? What is that back end for you? I am building relationships with blank. We're coming to that in just a moment. To do what? What is it that you're trying to do? One other additional way to think about this is you can't build a plan towards a destination that you don't know, right? And it's not to say that you have to be absolutely clear, right? So another thing that I think is really important is that we recognize that our our purpose in building our career and advancing isn't about being crystal clear, right? If you're crystal clear, you're probably aiming too low, 
All right. If you're crystal clear, I need you to think and dream a little bit bigger. All right. So we don't want to be crystal clear, but I think of it as having cloudy clarity. I want to have some sense of my next step. And it's that destination. It's that place. It's that too. That's part of that purpose statement. So I am building relationships with who to what. This, this is our first stop. Right. So the first thing that we have to know is our why or our purpose. Right. And we're going to put it into that same framework, I am building relationships with who in order to what? And what is that second blank for you? All right, that's our first question. That's the first place that we're gonna stop today, all right? So does everyone have that? And if you want, feel free to put it into the chat. Like, what is your purpose? What is your destination? What are you trying to accomplish is another way to think about it. You are trying to do what right now? What is that blank for you? Are you in the middle of a career pivot? I saw some of the previous questions that came in. Many of you are in that transition where you're really trying to figure out, you're trying to reimagine and reinvent because you've gone through some loss. And I think that's a natural part of everyone's last 19 months. And we're trying to figure out what is that next thing for us? But don't, don't get so caught in the emotion of like, I've got to figure out exactly what that is. I just want you to get a picture in mind of your next step. What is that next thing? What is that next thing for you? I see you all in the chat. Uh, some of you sharing a little bit about the small talk that's, listen, that we got we to gotta hush that little, that little negative um, person sometimes in our mind so that we, that we can keep things going. So what is that purpose for you? Right? That's the first question that we've got to answer. Here's the second. Right. Are we ready for the second question? The second question that we have to answer after we get a sense of what is the why, right? What is the purpose? And if you've ever, if you're familiar with Simon Sinek's work, he has a, a, a um, viral TED talk on start with why and really why that why is important. I'm going to help you with why that why is important when you get to who to talk to, right? Because sometimes our, I don't want to use the I don't use the wrong language. I'm thinking in my mind anxiety, um, but sometimes our questioning around what to say is really out of a lack of really introspection to really have some sense of where it is that we're trying to go, right? And once you get that question answered first, it helps you, I promise you, with the what to say. So after you get the, your why right down, the next question we, that we have to answer is who? So remember, I said, leave that, leave that first blank, right? Because we're going to talk about who. And when you're thinking about who, there are three elements of who that I want you to, 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 to think about. And this, your PDF is going to help you with this. You want to think about who you are. Remember, I said emotional intelligence. The first part of EI or EQ is self-awareness. So who am I, right? Who am I? Who you need? Right. So where are the gaps in your network? Where are the gaps in your network? I'm going to share with you a quick way to map your network in that PDF. I hope you downloaded your guide. And the second who is who they are. Who are the people? Right. So here are the three who questions. Who are you? Who do you need? And then who are they? Who are the people that you need? And so if you have that PDF guide, I'm going to share my screen with you and walk you through it so we can go through this together. And this is really going to help us again with some practical ways to take things that sometimes feel um, there's a lot of theory, right? There's a lot of good tips right around networking. I want to share with you something that you can use, something that you can take with you and that you can use regardless of your own personal context. So what I like to um, share with, with groups, teams, clients that we work with in coaching is what we call our visa, right? So this is this first question, who are you, right? And visa stands for values, interests, skills, and abilities. We don't have enough time to walk through all of this today, but here's what I need you to get clear on. What are your personal values? Three to four. I don't mean your organizations. I mean, what are the non-negotiables by which you make decisions, right? When it comes to the fork in the road, when it comes to the crossroads, a lot of women, millions of women have had this experience over the last 19 months that we look up and recognize that the way we're going about work 
is out of alignment with our value of family. It's out of alignment with our value of having, you know, mental and emotional well-being in the work that we're doing, that I don't have to sacrifice one for the other, right? So what are those values for you? What are your interests? What are you naturally curious about? I want you to use this guide to spend some time to fill that in. And then what are your skills? And I want you to do something here because I recognize my audience here. And sometimes as women... <clears throat> We can get a little uh, modest or, you know, we lean too much into humility when it comes to talking about, right, what we're really great at and what our skills are. I want you to list your skills and then I want you to go ask two people that one person that knows you and one person that's worked with you and get some feedback, right? Get some feedback on your skills, both your technical skills, um, those things that you have worked on and maybe you have a certification or a degree or you've taken, taken a course, but also what many call soft skills, I think of them as power skills. What are those skills, right? The interpersonal skills, communication, strategic thinking, what are those skills? And then what are your abilities? Think of abilities as your strengths, right? So that's the first who you got to know is you. Before I can go talk and connect to anyone else, I got to have a pretty good sense of who I am. This visa will help you do that. Then as you figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, and get more clear about who you are, who is it that you need? Who is it that you need? And really, this is about us understanding who is currently in our network and who do we need that's going to help us to get to where it is that we're trying to go. And so I want you to use this third part of the guide on your own. And I want you to do a brain dump. I want you to list the names of the people, listen to this last piece, that know you. We say this a lot. We say, um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. It's not what you know, it's who knows you. I can know a lot of people, right? By way of living digitally now, right? I know a lot of people. I have a lot of right followers or people that I know. That's not the question. Who knows you? That's why first, we have to know ourselves and then we can ask them more, ask ourselves a more informed question. Who knows that about me? Who's, who's clear on my visa? And then that gap, that's where we network, right? That especially, and again, if you're an extrovert and you've got this down pat and you're like, it's everybody, then that is fantastic. I am rooting for you. But particularly if you are conservative with your energy, if you need the alone time to recharge, this may sound overly um, engineered or strategic, but I'm sharing with you the what has helped me to really manage not only building a great network, but also in a way where I don't feel depleted, right? Because I'm not trying to meet everybody. It would be a great to, but I know that's not my goal. I have a clear sense of who I am. I know who I need, and then I know who they are. I want to share with you a quick, a quick framework that's in my book, and I include it in the last um, page of the guide. There is a um, a savings code for you to get your copy of Thrive Through. At the end of December, I published this book and it's all around helping us to reimagine after loss. That's the premise of the book. So helping us rethink resilience. Resilience isn't about trying to bounce back. No one's going back to January, 2020. It's about how do I extrapolate the lessons from loss to reimagine and then reinvent. The, that's the work I really love doing with women. So there's a section in here that I'm going to walk you through, and it's called your pyramid of support. It's in the guide as well. And here's how you know who's in your network, okay? So the pyramid of support looks like this really quickly. And you have four levels. At the bottom, you have spectators. These are the people that see you. Sometimes you know that they see you, oftentimes you don't. We usually use this word negatively, but it's not a negative word. It just means there are people that are watching. <laughs> and we especially know that, that now in this digital age, I mean, I don't know about you, I can have a conversation about something and 30 minutes later, open up my Instagram and I have never Googled that topic and I'm served up an ad, right? So there's that sense, but also in terms of just on social, right? There are people that are seeing your content that are connecting with you that know who you are, even in a traditional working environment in person that see you, right? Now they're spectators and then spectators, when you know that they see you and they affirm you, these people are encouragers, right? So these are people that'll say to you, 
oh, Katie, you did a really great job on that last project. Or, hey, Brittany, I really like the way that you did X, Y, and Z. On social, they're the people that write in the comments, right? They're the people that double tap. You know they're engaging with you. They're encouraging you. But this is the level that we often get confused, right? Because we can think that because people encourage us, right? That they're in this next level. Here's what I need you to know about your network. The clearest sign of support is investment. The clearest sign of support is investment. So what this dotted line represents is investment, okay? Investment. And when you think about investment, you know, as a business owner, you you may like me think about like, you know, people that have like bought what I'm, you know, providing, not only that, right? These are people that invest not only their, their money, but their time and their talent in you. These are the people that say, hey, yeah, I'd love to do a market interview with you. Or yeah, send me over your resume. I'll share some feedback on it, right? These are people that invest in you. And those are the people that I think of as my supporters. They have made some kind of investment in me that's clear. I don't have to question it. Now, it doesn't mean that they haven't made an investment that they don't support me in some way but they're encouragers and I appreciate the encouragement and I want to make sure that I give them opportunities to make the investment, right? And then this last level, this last level that is essential if you are looking to advance are your sponsors or I even sometimes interchange that word for advocates. These are the people with the positional influence to help you get to where you're trying to go. So when you're thinking about the who of your network, You need to know who do I need in order to get to that destination? Whatever was in your blank in this purpose, right? In order to, the first place to start when you're networking online or when you're trying to make those genuine connections is thinking about who do I have that's in my pyramid of support and where are the gaps? And for a lot of us, right? We'll just use this as an example. We have a gap in this top tier, right? We have a gap in people who are in positional power that can help us get to where we're trying to go. We all often talk about having a seat at the table, right? I have to give a shout out here to Minda Hartz. She has an amazing book too now, but her first one is called The Memo, What Women of Color Need to Know to Secure a Seat at the Table, right? So we talk about this idea and we give this visual of having a seat at the table. So here's how I differentiate these two, right? A supporter is going to save you a seat, right? They're going to say, hey, right? If we're in the, in a, let's just envision for a minute, we're in a, in the same room, in-person context. They're going to say, hey, don't sit in that seat. That's Brittany's seat. She's coming to the meeting. She, she may be running a few minutes late, but she, she's on her way. Save her that seat, right? They're going to, they're, they're looking out for you, right? A sponsor is going to walk into the room and say, are we ready to start the meeting? It's their meeting. And because they're your sponsor, they're going to look around and say, oh, I think all of the seats are taken and Brittany's on her way. Can someone go in the closet and bring a chair out and make room for her to sit down? That's a sponsor, right? So when we're thinking about our network, it's important to know who we need. And if it's that person, right, that we need, then the next question that we have to ask ourselves and answer, right, is what? (laughs) What, right? So after we've gotten clear on the why, why are we even trying to make build connections with people in the first place outside of the, of course, like meeting new people and, you know, right. That's like autopilot. That's like, yeah, everyone kind of wants to do that. We're talking about you're trying to get somewhere, right? So you are owning this process for yourself. So you got to know what you want. Yep. We're back at self-awareness, right? What do you want? I can't tell you how much time I spend um, in coaching probably 60, 40, 40 strategy, 60% helping to get clear about what do you want, right? Answering that question. Then you got to know what are their priorities? I'm going to come back to that because this one is really, 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 really important. And then the last what I hear you all, well, Brittany, after I do that, what do I say? (laughs) What do I say? Okay, so first is what do you want? I'm just gonna say a couple of of thoughts on this. As women, right, and I've learned this in my own career, I had gotten into this place, particularly when I was trying to, there was a moment in my, my career where I was transitioning from sales into marketing. And everybody had something to say about how it should 
be done, right? What I should do, how I should go about things. And sometimes we can take on the expectations and also the journeys of other people as what we should do. And it holds us in analysis and in analysis paralysis where we never make a decision. Right. We get caught up in the assessment of, well, what 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 should I do or how should I go about that? One of the best ways to gain clarity is to make a decision. It's to make a decision. Right. The moment that you make a decision, the moment that I made a decision between my first kind of big promotion, do I want to go the people leader route or do I want to go the marketing route? Right. I really, really loved both, but the paths were different. I had a lot of people saying, hey, you should do this because you're clearly a people leader. That's clearly next for you. Right. We got roles right here. Like that's here's here's what you should do. I had to decide what Brittany wanted at that in that season of life. And what I really wanted was to learn the business. I had learned the execution side. I had some great leadership opportunities. I wanted to learn really, how do we even go about coming up with the execution tactics for the sales team, right? That's what I wanted to learn. So everyone else's should didn't matter, right? I made a decision in the moment that I did, it became more clear about what my next steps are. So we've got to decide, okay, what is it that I want? Make a decision in that and be confident that we're going to trust the process, right? That beautiful language that we love to say all the time, but that's really what it means. It means I'm going to make a decision, right? Because it's in what we build or what we go after that really shows what we believe. And it's not just what we believe about others, but it really magnifies what we believe about ourselves, right? Do you believe that you're capable? Do you really believe that you that you can, right? Do you really believe that that's the best path for you? And if you do, take the step in that direction and let the steps in that direction be the evidence of your decision. So that's the first what. What do you want? And there's no wrong answer here, right? What really resonates with you and gives you a sense of peace and like, okay, yeah, there are a lot of things that I could be doing. Here's what I'm going to decide to do. And here's what I'm going to commit to do. And my action is what is showing me and others that I'm committed to this path. That helps us then understand the the what in terms of their priorities. So when we're thinking about this this pyramid of support, one of the things that's important to have a sense of, right, when people say things like do your research, that's why I I didn't want to do a slide of like, here are the top tips on networking, right? What do your research really means is to have a sense of one, who you need to connect with, and then getting clear on their priorities. And there are a few ways that you can do that, right? One, you can ask, in conversation, right? So when you set up, we're coming to what to say, when you ask for that time or to connect, right? You can just ask, hey, what's top of mind for you right now in your business? What are you really focused on as a leader right now, right? Really tapping into their priorities because when we say things like add value, value is subjective, right? So value just means usefulness, right? That's what value means. It means usefulness, which also means useful to whom? Well, it depends, right? So in order to know that you're adding value or in order to know that you're useful, you got to do a little due diligence, a little research to understand what are their priorities. And sometimes if it's someone that you don't feel like you have great access to, there's content out there, right? So we're on a platform that has amazing content. If there's someone that you want to meet and they have a podcast or they have a book or they have a blog, right? Really tapping into those things to look for, not just consuming everything they put out, but you're really looking for like, what's important to them? Like, I really see that, you know, insert person that you want to meet. They always post on this topic. Hmm, that must be really important to them, right? I have a mentor, matter of fact, that I just quoted, I, I, I should have um, attributed the, 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 the build and believe quote to Marshawn Evans Daniel. She's amazing. If you're not connected with her, you, I, believe, I believe that's one of the shoulds I'll use. You should be. She's awesome. But um, one of the things that she talks about a lot on her platform is purpose, right? So it's very clear if I'm trying to connect with her in some way, one of her priorities is purpose, right? It's helping people to align their purpose with what it is that they do every single day. And so you get to what to say by anchoring what you're saying in their priorities. Now, one of the things that I'll commit to doing, um, if, and if you, if you downloaded the guide, I'll have your email so I can connect with you. I would love to do a part two and I would love to do it, not to put the mom project on the spot, but I'd love to do it here. But um, I love storytelling so much. And so much of what to say really has to do with how you're communicating and the words that you're choosing, right? So one 
kind of easy thing, right? That's a that's a great tip for networking online is that if you are, before you reach out with a request, right? So a request being like, oh, you know, I would love 15 minutes on your calendar. Please don't use the language, pick your brain, but I would love to, you know, connect with you live or connect with you via Zoom, right? Before you do that is to add value by sharing info that's connected with their priorities. And I know this was one of the questions that came in uh, during registration. So it could be anything from, hey, I understand from your content that you're really interested in affordable housing in Nashville. And I saw this really great article on how Amazon is now investing in affordable housing that I thought may be interested to you. Take a look at, take a look here and let me know what you think. Right. I just sent that message on LinkedIn. I didn't ask for anything. I clearly shared that I knew the what, I knew their priorities. And my value add was to share information that was in alignment, not with what I need, right? Because I haven't made a deposit yet. Right. So not with what I need, but what their priorities are. Right. So part of what to say. Um, and I think, you know, two to one, three to one is reasonable uh, depending on what you, you know, the, again, depending on your purpose and why you're connecting, but looking for, you know, two to three times to make that deposit, right? To connect, to add value in some way before then you look to make a withdrawal. And the withdrawal is, can I get time on your calendar? Or, you know, can you take a look at my resume? Something that you're asking of them. And I think when you get to that step where you're ready to ask something of them, right, you're asking them to stop what they're doing and, you know, connect with you or look at something. I think it's great that you make it as seamless as possible. So one of the things that I see so often, and I'm like, oh, I gotta make a post on this, right, is instead of asking people, right, if I'm making a request, instead of asking you, hey, I'd love to get some time on your calendar when works for you a more efficient way to do that, right? Because if you're making the ask, part of what to say is recognizing that they have priorities. And so I want to make it as simple as possible to connect with me. So send a Calendly link, right? Or say, hey, here are three dates and times that work for me. Do any of these work for you? If they do, here's a link where we can get connected. Or, right, if you're doing that due diligence to understand about their priorities, you may bump into their their link, right? They may have a way that you can connect and reach them. But I think it's a great thing to consider when you're reaching out to connect with someone. Part of what to say is ensuring that however you're asking them to connect with you, you make it as seamless as possible. So you literally want to think about in your mind, right? And this isn't a negative, but this is how you should approach it. I want to make it to where they don't have to think. Right. So if I have to think about if I have to look at my calendar and say, oh, when does work with me because Katie's reaching out, she wants to connect. Mm -mm, That's too much. (laughs) Right. I want to make it easy for Katie to say yes. Right. If I'm asking Katie for time, I want to make it easy for her to say yes. So I want to say, hey, here's my link. You just click that. And then, you know, here you go. Or here are three dates. Right. So you want to consider that in the what. Right. So we talked about first, you got to know your why. Then you got to know your who. Thirdly, you got to know your what. Right. What you want, right? Spend some time in introspection and then make a decision what their priorities are and then what to say. And then last but not least, and we're going to open up for Q&A. So my third question, or really my fourth one, is how, right? How, how, how is the third question. And so the first how is how do you add value We talked about that a little bit. That's the first how, right? Then how will you meet? And I really just gave you some pointers on that. Um, I recommend, and I think there's a free version of Calendly, but it's just an easy way to just set up your own calendar. That way, when you're reaching out to people, you just easily send that link and your, your options are already there. And then the last how is how will you follow? Oh, and this is a big one. Uh, (laughs) And when I say it's a big one, I mean, it's one that I'm definitely still working on. All of these I'm still working on, but that one specifically. So one, the first how question, how do you add value? So in that um, guide, and one of the things that I would love to do um, on a part two, whether we do it um, on our own or if we do it with a group, is to really walk through how you communicate who you are. So I included in the guide a personal brand assessment that will help you get a better sense of the value that you bring, right? So asking yourself questions like, what am I doing when I have the most joy? 
right? Going through your visa, thinking about what makes you unique. And then the last kind of inside or internal question is, what do you want to be known for? So if you had to choose an area of expertise that you want to be known for, right? What is that? What is that? And so much of this career story is about what you've demonstrated and what you decide, right? What have I demonstrated through my work, right? Through the results that I've garnered for organizations that I've been a part of. And then of that, because that's going to be a list, right? What you've demonstrated, you demonstrated a lot, right? Most of us have been in the workforce for at least a decade, many of us over a decade, right? So there's a lot that we've demonstrated there goes that other D word. <laughs> what are you going to decide from that list that you demonstrated? What do you want to decide to be known for? And it's not known for forever. I mean, take your, your favorite uh, vocal artist, right? How many artists, Rihanna's on the top of my mind because I'm wearing her lipstick today. Um, it's on my desk here, right? Rihanna, we, we, she initially wanted to be known for music. She built out an amazing music career. Then she got into cosmetics. Then she got into fashion. Then she got into skincare, right? So it's not to say that what you decide you're going to stick with forever, but if you don't decide, you won't be known for anything. It's really, really hard for people to um, keep you, hold you in mind, right? Especially when you come up above this dotted line. When we're talking about supporters and sponsors, right? They want to know, like, when I'm thinking about Brittany, I think about what? And our mind, right? This isn't, isn't a storytelling masterclass, but our mind naturally does that, right? It, we're naturally looking for um, heuristics. We're naturally looking for shortcuts to be able to place, right, and make decisions uh, faster, right? So when it comes to our personal brand, we're automatically doing that. So you want to give people something by what you have decided to be known for, to link you with, right? So for me, it's very much personal branding and DI, right? Personal branding in terms of the coaching that I do with women and with, from an organizational perspective, most of the work that we do is around leadership development in the inclusion and equity space, right? So I want to be known as that. Doesn't mean it won't change, right? But that's where I've put a stake in the ground. So we have to really put a stake in the ground and that helps us to demonstrate how we add value when we communicate. Um, and then how will you meet? So again, for most of us online, right? We're meeting in moments like this, Right. And we go from moments like this to reaching out, usually via a direct message, again, to make a deposit, right, to make a deposit, to make a deposit. It doesn't have to all be via DM. It could be, you know, you sign up for their email list, you read the blog and then you reply like, oh, that was really great. Here are the highlights that I liked from the blog. I can't wait for the next one. You didn't ask for anything, but that, that's a deposit that you made in making a connection with someone before you then make the withdrawal to ask for something. And then the last piece is follow up. And here's the tip here. I know we've got about 15 minutes left and I want to make sure we have time for Q&A. When you're thinking about follow up. So my current practice, and again, this is a process for me. My current practice is after I have a conversation, I put a reminder on my calendar of when I'm following up again. Right. So typically what I will do, especially if you're a business owner, I will ask when's the next time we're going to connect. Right. Especially if it's something that's ongoing. So you can set that expectation up front. But maybe if it's someone that you don't know as well and you've just had a first, you know, meet and greet connection conversation, 20 minutes, you're on Zoom, you're getting to know each other. And you're like, hmm, I don't want to ask for another 20 minutes, but I'm going to make a mental note and I'm going to put it on my calendar of when I will follow up with them. And I think the same way that we use calendars for meetings, it's a great way to leverage your calendar for follow up to ensure that you are on some kind of cadence and it doesn't have to be monthly. I think quarterly is a great cadence for people that you don't know as well, right, especially up here in this top tier because usually sponsors right, have a lot going on because they're in that position of influence, but you want to make your make a mental note of yourself of okay three months have gone by, let me check in with Phil. Right. Phil is one of my top tier people. It's like, OK, it's about time to check in with Phil again. Let me send him a quick note so I can connect. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Let's go through a quick summary of what we have up here on the board. And then I want to answer your question. So if we're thinking about how do we network online, it starts. I promise you, it starts with great self and social awareness. So we have to be clear on what's our why. What is the purpose that we're after? What are we trying to accomplish in this season, right? Whatever that looks like. Then we got to know who, right? We got to really get in tune with who we are, 
right? Currently. And again, I definitely, definitely recognize that we evolve, especially when we're met with change, challenge, and loss. I talk about uh, in my book, Thrive Through It, the journey uh, of the loss of my mother three months after relocating to New York and taking a really big marketing role, and she died unexpectedly. And I am not the same woman today that I was prior to June 5th, 2017, when she passed. I'm not the same woman, right? So it's like, who are you currently? I think of it as the now you right? So based on everything that's happened, who's the now you? And it's okay if things have changed. It's okay if your priorities have changed. It's okay if even in some instances, your values have changed, right? I used to think, hey, I'm really, really after this C-suite inside of corporate, right? And now my my life and my work looks much different. The C-suite is still involved, but now I'm a partner, right? And so your, 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 uh, your circumstances may change who you are, but who's the now you, right? Um, who do you need and who are they, right? Where are they on this pyramid of support? That's our, that's our second question. So why, who, and then what, what do you want? <laughs> and that's internal, right? I'm not asking you like, what do you want? But like internally, like, what do I want? What is it that I'm really after right now in this season? What would really help me get from where I am to where I want to be? And then what are their priorities? right? I got to know what's important to them because I'm not communicating just to, to have something to say. I'm communicating to make a connection, right? And connection is really built around affinity. So when there's sameness or likeness, it's usually easier to find um, that commonality, but sometimes we have to really do some due diligence, right? To understand what are their priorities? What do they, what do they want? And then I got to then know and let that frame up what I'm going to say. And then the last question that we talked about is how, how will you add value? What's that stake in the ground for how you want to be known, how how you want to be known, how you want to position yourself, right? How are you going to meet online? Right. I hope that you're leveraging LinkedIn. Listen, I hope that everyone that is under the sound of my voice has a LinkedIn profile and you are connected on LinkedIn. You're connected with the mom project. So that's another great place to network and connect, right? So you have some ways to do that. And then last but not least, um, coming up with your cadence that meets your needs for how you will follow up. All right. So with that, I hope you all have put some questions in the chat. Katie, do we have any questions? Yeah, this is phenomenal, by the way. Like I'm like taking notes. I put your book in my shopping cart over here, like all of the above. This is just been so phenomenal. Um, yes, definitely a few questions right off the bat. Um, I guess, you know, in terms of like the value um, and sort of like communicating who you are, um, you know, we saw some questions. We have a lot of people who are like making a return to the workforce, maybe after time out, five, 10, maybe even longer, you know, time out of the workforce. Any like special tips or like, context you can give to those people as they're sort of framing up maybe their personal brand before they even start like the outreach part? Yes, great, great question. So if you are in the midst of that transition where um, you've been out of the workforce for a while and you're thinking about what is that next thing that you're going to be doing, I want you to really anchor yourself in as you're looking over what I call your marketing materials, right? So uh, that includes your resume, Um, It also includes any mid-year or year-end reviews that you have. And then the last piece that we don't consider is truly the introspection. So that um, assessment guide that I put in um, the guide, it's actually page, I think it's page six and seven, will walk you through some powerful questions that will help you think about what are the skills that you've garnered, even with, with whatever that gap has been in the time that you aren't working, <clears throat> that can become transferable skills for how you position yourself for what's next, right? So if you've taken some time out, one of the things that I like to anchor the communication of that in is here's what I've done and here's what I've learned, right? So let's just take a um, hypothetical scenario. So let, I'll just use my myself as an example. So Um, I left Pfizer the end of 2019, August of 2019. So before that I was coaching and speaking on the side. So I was, 
you know, side hustling, as we say, um, as I was with uh, working within the organization. And then when I took the leap of faith, the end of 2019 to build out my, my company, my leadership development firm, that's when I started working with other corporations. So let's just say in a hypothetical situation, right, I'm in this entrepreneurial space, which could be perceived as a gap in your resume. And I'm looking to go back to work next year. All right, let's just say that's my hypothetical scenario. What I'm going to be doing is looking at the time that would either be that transition period or what is maybe considered right a gap. So even if let's say you um, are were a stay-at-home mom for a period of time, and I want to look at what are the things that I was doing during that time that can be transferable skills that then help me position myself for where I want to be. Right. So as a business owner. I may talk about um, strategic thinking, right? And being very forward thinking about how, you know, I was building a, a business in the middle of a pandemic from the start in the middle of the pandemic. And I had to completely rethink my strategy. And that's why I would be a great addition to this team because I know how to take and make a decision without having all of the facts and be decisive and move forward with a new plan, right? In the midst of change. Right. If I am a, a stay at home mom. Right. And I'm ready to get back to work. Um, I will tell you because uh, transparency is one of my values. I am not a mother, but I would assume um, one thing that I could talk about is the unpredictable nature of my day. Right. Um, so I have a really good good girlfriend. She just had twins. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like she's figuring it out. Like every day is different. But if I'm trying to position that from a work perspective, I may talk about, hey, I spent two years, two wonderful years at home, really valuing. So two things to anchor in values and lesson, values and lessons as a communication tool. So um, I spent two years at home with my family. I really valued the time to be able to be one of the primary caregivers for my children during their formative years. And what I learned during that time was how to be flexible when things, you know, in the midst of change. And for me, that was change every single day. Uh, I was raised into twins at the same, you know, a set of twins at the same time and every day looked really different. And I believe that I can take that ability to be flexible, but still to be able to be uh, progressive and, and, and garner great results to add to this team in exposition, right? So it's like, you don't want to get so bogged down in the details of whatever that gap or transition was. But what you do want to do is look at that time period and say, what was I doing? And what were the skills, right? That's why I talk about, the, that's why the visa is so powerful. Like the S is about, it's not about job title. It's about what are the skills that I've developed by way of the way I was working or living during a period of time. And then how do I communicate those moving forward, right? So looking, look for those transferable skills and let that be the anchor for how you position yourself moving forward. The last thing that I'll say on this is don't underestimate the power of making a new decision. Right. So when I was transitioning from sales to marketing, for a lot of people, it didn't make sense. They're like, you want to go from, you know, your position in sales. The next step should be right. This sales leadership role. Now you're saying you want to do marketing. That doesn't make sense. It didn't matter what made sense. It was about it mattered what I wanted. Right. I wanted to do marketing next. So I was able to frame up my past sales experience and talk about how I demonstrated marketing capabilities, which was what was next in communication about how I showed up as a sales professional. So again, it's about what are those transferable skills? What are the competencies of the new role that I'm after? And how do I frame up my experiences through that lens? Awesome. Yep. That's all great advice for a re-entry a pivot, like there's so many different cases, but it is true. You got to start with that inventory and think about how it translates to where you want to go next. So awesome, awesome stuff. Um, another question that came up that's, I thought it's kind of interesting. So this person was saying, um, if, if you know what job you want and what company you want to work for, but they don't currently have an opening, like any ideas there, how to like network strategically that way? Yes, that's a really, really great question. So two things come to mind. One, I would definitely be getting myself well acquainted with um, their website to see if there's any um, community facing activities that they do. Um, so that's one idea. The other is to leverage a platform uh, like LinkedIn to tap into people that work there. 
right? And so that introduction can sound like, you know, I'm really interested in uh, working for the mom project. I see that you work there. I would love to learn more about the kind of work that you do, um, the, the, you know, the ways that you build community so I can get more insight into what it's like to be a team member. Right. And so I think um, taking the informational interviews approach where you want to learn more about the company, where you want to learn more about um, what it's like to work there is a great approach that helps you to build a network within that company before you get the opportunity to apply. And then what that does, right? So that's really like deposits for a job interview process because then that gives you leverage for when a role actually happens. If you've built up those relationships in enough time, um, you can even ask for like, okay, I saw this job opening, right? They're usually super vague. Um, <laughs> as you say so myself, it's like, okay, it's great, but it's not telling me a lot. Um, you can ask for things like, okay, who's on this team or maybe who leads this team or who would be a great person to talk to where I could get more insight on this role that just opened, right? So again, um, if you're doing that due diligence up front, it can put you in a great position for when the role actually opens to know some people. Awesome. And that, that actually um, brings up another question. So I know when you talked about making deposits with people, I think you said something around like, oh yeah, two to three to start. Is there like, I guess a sweet spot of like, is it, would you recommend doing it two to three times, even if like you don't necessarily like hear back from them or is there like a certain number of times you maybe do the deposit and you don't hear back that it's like, oh, should probably walk away and try again some other time. Like just was wondering if there was sort of best practices there. Yeah, I, I think it depends. And I pause because that's never the answer that anyone wants. And so one thing that I'll say is, and I didn't really lean heavy on this because I know everyone has a different feeling about it. I think that, and I'll use the technical language, content marketing is one of the best ways for people to get to know you, right? So just thinking about like, how do you leverage LinkedIn, even without being in someone's inbox, to share information that gives people a better idea of who you are, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to mean, uh, mean that you're always on video. Maybe it's the articles that you share, or maybe it's, you know, you read something on LinkedIn and you share it and you add, you know, a caption that has your takeaways. Maybe you share the recent book that you're reading. And so I think those are all great ways for people to really get to know you. And then if you have that experience of, okay, I reached out to somebody, they didn't respond. One, I would say, don't take offense. And I know that's hard. But um, I've even <clears throat> learned <clears throat> as I grow as a leader, things just get busy. And like, there'll be moments where it's like, oh, I really meant to reach out to that person. And literally two weeks have gone by and it has nothing to do with what they said or how they reached out or like their email was perfect. They're amazing. I just haven't had an opportunity to get around to them. So I think part of it too is like not taking on, again, the belief that little, you know, person on your, on your shoulder that you got to like shrug off, they're like, oh, they're not answering because in an insert story that you tell yourself, right? Some of the most powerful stories that we tell and the most negative oftentimes are the ones that we tell ourselves about ourselves. So just think of it as like, okay, they didn't answer like, hey, I'm circling back. And I take on the, um, I think it's a good rule of thumb to follow up until you're told otherwise. And again, you don't want to feel like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm like, you know, bothering them. But I, I have to remind myself of that. Like, okay, they didn't say stop emailing or they didn't say, hey, please stop messaging me, right? And so I'm going to take this as an invitation to whatever that cadence is every other month. I don't, maybe not every week, <laughs> right? But whatever that cadence is, I'm still going to follow up until I'm told otherwise. And I think that that's okay just because, I mean, we're all being bombarded with, um, requests and meetings and feedback or um, opportunities to connect, especially in this virtual environment. Awesome. 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 Uh, uh, I'm like bummed. We're, we're at time right now. I feel like we could go for like three more hours with questions. Um, but Brittany, this was phenomenal. Thank you for sharing all this wisdom, advice, pro tips, your guides. Um, we will most definitely be having you back to do something else in the, in the next month or two. Um, and yeah, thanks to everybody for joining today. Um, we'll be, if you RSVP, you'll get the follow-up email either today or Monday um, with a recording um, message from Brittany. And yeah, just have a wonderful weekend. Again, Brittany, this was phenomenal. 
Thank you, Katie. I appreciate you all having me. And if you did download the guide, um, make sure you check out that last page. There's a code mom project uh, that'll get you free shipping. So you can pick up a copy um, of Thrive Through It. It comes in a great box. Um, there's even, um, I'll sign the, co the personal copies that come from my website. It's also available um, on Amazon and on Audible if you prefer to listen. And I did narrate it. So I appreciate the opportunity to get to share today. And I look forward to staying connected with you all. Awesome. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, everyone. Have a good